off with a champ, your new Mr. Olympia. the favorite as things started to unfold. You can see you got a groundswell of support after you won the Arnold and people saw uh, the improvements that you made the last couple of years as you kind of separated yourself out, put yourself with the blinders on in Kuwait at Bonobo Dye's gym and Oxygen Gym. The best gyms in the world are uh, our good friend Bonner's in Kuwait. Uh, and you put all your collected marbles in the basket, man. I mean, that was it. You said, do or die. I'm going to put my best foot forward. I'm going to make every possible concession I can to get myself in the winner's circle. And here you are, buddy, Mr. Olympia. You know, this sport requires a big commitment. Uh, just a lot of, lot of just effort and work and grinding. And uh, if you want to be a champion, you've got to make the sacrifices to be a champion. And, uh, and I just dreamed of being a champion and being in this position. And uh, it's definitely, definitely paid off. Uh, like I said, I, I continue to say I wouldn't be able to do it without my support team. And my wife uh, allowed me to uh, go and just focus on the business of bodybuilding. But I, you know, it, it's, this title was, it was important to me. I've dreamed of it for a long time. And uh, it's just a blessing to be able to capitalize on this opportunity and see this day. So I just want to just represent this well. I appreciate all you guys for your, your kind words and your messages. And uh, like I said, this is for the fans. This is for the future of the sport. And uh, all these great athletes up there, we're, we're seeking to represent this sport. And, I'm just very impressed with the production. I'm very impressed with how this thing was laid out. To sell out this show with all the drama that was going on was an amazing thing to, to know and understand. So that, that, that this takes it out there to the testament of the commitment of this team that, in producing the Olympia. And they, and they didn't drop the ball one bit. They, they went after it, they picked up, and, and made this even a better year than a lot of people expected. So uh, you guys, you guys are, are, are great, man. We had a wonderful experience backstage. You ran it perfectly and uh, everything was beautiful. So uh, my hat goes off to you guys for uh, the commitment that you made to uh, this uh, event. See, I'm do as we know it to be the greatest event on the planet. Thank you, Brandon. All right, from brand new champs to defending champs, Whitney Jones, your fitness Olympia two-time champion. Hello, good morning, guys. That's it. Thank you, Whitney. <laughs> good night, everybody. She said she had to keep it short today, but I thought we got more out of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. You're the champ. You earned it. So this year, you find yourself defending the title for the first time. What's the difference in prep, mindset-wise, between going for the title and defending the title? Honestly, I think um, everyone likes to put that pressure on you. Like, oh, you've got to live up to all these expectations and it's going to be so much harder to go in, and it can. Um, I found out earlier in my career that I was putting too much pressure on myself on the outcome, so I learned my lesson that way. And I just try to go with the same mindset of I am the prize, every day matters, just stay focused, stay in my own lane, don't worry about what anyone else is doing. And that helps take the pressure off. Um, for me personally, I coach my athletes that same way too. Um, you can only control what you are doing. And if I put my best foot forward, if I put in the effort every single day, then I need to be proud of myself at the end of the day. And I was happy with my prep, I was happy with um, my performance with what I presented physique-wise, and of course I was very happy well, what was interesting is that some people may not know. Now, Whitney, last year in winning the title, actually did with a torn ACL, um, wrapped up, bandaged up. Uh, and, you know, you could say actually you hit it pretty well with the costume and all that stuff. But uh, for those of us that know you, we knew you were overcoming a huge obstacle in that. Did it, was that actually less pressure or more pressure? I mean, you had to feel like I have really nothing to lose here, so I'm just going to kind of throw something whatever I can do out there in terms of. Uh, mobility, and you ended up in the winner's circle, but um, did you feel less pressure actually in, because you were injured going in? Well, um, so I've mentioned this to a few people, I didn't say anything before, I actually did have an injury. Um, I had a torn bridge here, I had a torn leg, so Jeez. it wasn't without um, <laughs> drama, yeah. but I'm finding that 
that's what's helping me be a winner. So, um, <laughs> Oh, we're going to let your, you better hope you let your competitions here. They're going to be helping you this next year. <laughs> I don't really know what it would feel like to go to help me, but uh, honestly, it's, I feel like the challenges help me be a better athlete. Um, with my division, it allows us to be creative. It's all about entertainment, right? So when I do have my injuries, I take that body part or whatever out of the equation, and it forces me to think out of the box. I got to come up with new um, options, new skills. Um, obviously, I still had to use my shoulder, um, but a lot of it was I just couldn't do certain range of motion, certain things, um, tumbling past, just had to go for it. So there was a lot of things you just, in the moment, you just go, um, crush your fingers a little bit, and with the heart and soul and the mindset that I feel I have, I, I feel like I am a better athlete with all these challenges that have come my way, because I know I can handle and it just makes me um, learn a lesson with each injury, with each roadblock, because there's always a silver lining, and if you can find the good in anything that's thrown away, um, it helps you evolve as a person, and I, I love the challenge. I truly can say I would not change anything about my entire journey as an amateur athlete, pro athlete, and then as an Olympian champion. All right, Whitney Jones. Remind me to never tell you to break a leg before a competition. Please don't, it may already be broken. Yeah, it's a good point. All right, from the defending champ back to the new champ, Chris Bumstead, classic physique. All right, Chris, the classic stash, making his way. On to the Olympia State. I like it, bro. I mean, I think the only person did like it was my mother, to be honest. She told me you better shake that damn thing off before I went on stage, but I mean, people love it, I love it, oh, right? so we decided to keep this here. I think every year you should add on to it, so next year you go with the Fu Manchu. A little twist, maybe? Yeah, yeah, right, maybe, yeah, maybe the old time. Now that would be classic. Yeah. You know, I like the look, Chris, but... Um, as front runners come in, obviously, Brianna, the champ, uh, you guys have been battling it out for a couple of years now straight. So he's stalking you already, stuck up on you. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Didn't even know he was there, did you? He's creeping over my back, did you? He's creeping. Uh, but bottom line is, uh, you were one of the front runners coming in. You guys have always batted pretty strongly. And um, I think people recognize that you had a look that was very good for the, for the class. It just really needed to dial it in. And Brian's so tough. Uh, you know, he's hard to top, you know. But you managed to do it. Uh, Prejudging went very well for you. What were your thoughts after prejudging ended uh, as to where you were? Did you think you were in the, the winner's circle? Did you think, man, this is going to be a real close one? Or did you think you were behind? I think I thought I was ahead after that, for sure. I've never been someone who showed up with too much confidence. I've always, I've had moments where I've said against myself and that perhaps I didn't go 100%. And this time everything just kind of fell into place that it should have. And I put myself into a different mindset this week. I showed up and just felt so locked in. When I stepped on stage, everything just felt like it had come together. And I just felt so at peace. Just, it just felt right up there. I was calm. I wasn't looking over at anybody. I wasn't thinking what anybody else was doing. I was just like, what I'm doing right now feels right. Everything's on point. I got this. Good mindset So we get down to it, you hear the big announcement, it's, it's your name, I can see the, the look on your face of, uh, oh my god, I just won the show. <laughs> uh, what was going through your mind when you heard your name? The first thing was, how many people are here to try to cry in front of everybody? <laughs> and I had a few moments of holding them back once they said, Brian was second, I had some tears coming, just obviously we all go through so much, we put our bodies through so much, our family and our support system behind us deal with us through so much, and, it's just such a long journey, years going into, years and years, and so many hours in the gym, and diet, everything, going to this one moment, all culminating, like everything just falling into place right there. It's really something you can't put into words. And I showed up to win, I trained to win, I prepped to win, I told myself I would win this show, but nothing compares to really hearing your name called like that. It just feels a surreal moment. And I was grateful to have experienced it in front of all the fans out there. It's such an amazing stage. And which is an honor to be there. Well, it's an honor to have you as the new champion. Congratulations, Chris. <laughs> All right, 
Vending Chan. And two to your name when I was three. Sydney Gillen. You figure the Olympian champions. You are no stranger to the winner's circle, but you had a little bit more competition this year, didn't you? Well, I think I always Well, I saw somebody different there on stage next to you this year. Yeah. <laughs> Your old buddy Latoria made her triumphant return to the Olympia stage, and you guys were dead locked in with two wins apiece. Yeah. So this, this was the rubber match, and man, it came right down to it. I know it was close. Uh, could have gone either way, but it went your way this time. It did, thankfully. I was happy about that, but it was just great to just be back on stage with her because she brings a level of comfort. Like, once you everybody just knew. Like, yes, we competed for so long with somebody, but we had six years ago versus two years ago. So, kind of brings that comfort level back, which is nice. So, we could just go, like, a lot of people. Well, I'm still young, but, you know, I'm I was going to say, you haven't been around long enough to be old school, but. <laughs> so, but this is amazing. This is also the first prep that, this first year that I wasn't in school for the last two years. So, I graduated in May. This is the first prep that I didn't have to be on FaceTime on Wednesday. Well, congratulations on your third Olympia Grip victory. You don't seem like you're slowing down anytime soon, so I'm assuming we'll see you back in number four. Thank you. We're gonna get right down here. Well, I got a camera here. <laughs> this helps out a little bit. Your bikini Olympia champion, Lisa Pacini. So Lisa, you speak a little bit of English, but I speak zero Portuguese. So luckily my good friend Tamer speaks fluent Portuguese. Uh, so we'll have a little bit better interview today. Um, congratulations on your victory. Um, you are a new bikini champion. I know you worked very hard for this. The competition was absolutely on top this year. Yes, I really enjoyed my life because this obvious was my dream and guys, sorry for my English. <laughs> Uh, I always speak in Portuguese. Uh, eu estou vivendo um sonho é, na minha vida. E hoje, quando eu acordei e vi o meu troféu, eu pensei: Meu Deus, tenho 22 anos e eu sou a nova Miss Olímpia. E eu ainda não consigo acreditar nisso, ainda está caindo a ficha na minha vida. So this was the dream of her life, and then when she woke up this morning and she looked at a trophy, she just couldn't believe it. And she still cannot believe it that she's only 20 years old and she's Miss Olympia. Uh, o Olímpio por essa organização incrível e ter feito esse show maravilhoso, que é o sonho de todo atleta estar aqui competindo. E quando eu tive, meu sonho era um dia estar aqui, pisar no palco do Olímpia e agora estar aqui falando com vocês, sendo campeão do Olímpia, como eu falei, é uma coisa que vai demorar ainda para cair a ficha, eu vou voltar para o Brasil e vou ficar olhando aquele troféu várias vezes até conseguir acreditar nisso tudo. She said the best part about the Olympia really is the fans, is being up on the stage and looking at the fans, like looking back at her, the amount of energy that she felt yesterday was just incredible. And uh, she cannot wait for coming back next year and having the same feeling. She's again, just cannot believe the fact that she's Miss Olympia. It'll probably take her a month or two until she finally realizes what just happened.
Marquis Fernandez, the newness, the Kiki Olympia now. Will we see you competing throughout the year? Uh, the Arnold or other uh, pro competitions, or will you just defend the title next year? No, it will, I do competing the other competitions too. Um, maybe the Saber, Filipinas, and, and Ohio, the Olympia. Uh, we look forward to seeing you back on the pro stage throughout the year. Congratulations, you do compete Olympic champion.